it's Madden NFL 23. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Minnesota Vikings. All that and more coming up next. Well, later tonight in November, snowfall is forecasted to hit the Twin Cities. But right now, calm outside. And, of course, a calm day inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. started and we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Kenny Nwagu now out of his end zone and that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent. Always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. Cousins looking to put it up right away. And his first pass is incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalty. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. A first carry now for Dalvin Cook. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. On third down, you'll give them that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. Fielded at about the 28. 
That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. As Seattle's offense comes onto the field, we'll see a 10-year veteran under center. Guy who broke into the league as a starter back in 2013, Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And they will only muster a yard here in the 38. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing again on second down. Smith setting up the screen here. This is Walker. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you get a pass rusher second guessing himself that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. First carry here for Kenneth Walker, the third. And some room to maneuver. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good push up front. And that right in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front. And they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Back to Walker on first down. It's a loss of four on the first down play. And we often talk about defensive ends setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers, but how about here? This is a quarterback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Second and 14 now after the loss. Gino now to throw. And a loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but... I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 37. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. Throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. To throw, Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the four before being taken down. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run.
Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and eight. Here's Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. First down, here's Cousins. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Just picking up yardage and bunches here these last few plays. It moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Here we go now on first and goal. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. He'll buy some time right. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. On second and goal, Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. That catch good for eight, but still, it's third and goal now. Stepping his way into the end zone, it's a touchdown. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Touchdown. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and ten. Here's Smith. 
And this one is incomplete. Well, if you have man coverage on the outside, if my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands, they want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw, Smith. Finding a safety valve here, that's complete. And he'll get nothing out of that one. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and 10. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Walker now in first and 10. And some space here. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Boy, the offensive line there, that was a thing of beauty to watch them block. I love how you give a little appreciation for those big guys up front and well-deserved. But how about the execution behind them? You can see the hours of practice that have gone into it. Great pocket by the running back. Quarterback puts him right in the perfect spot. Great mesh point by them. The timing on point. The run even better. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10. Down at the 31. Smith. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Walker. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Good work there. Hold them out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two? Maybe even three more plays. From the two now, second and goal. Throwing now is Gino. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Noah Fant, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from evening this one up. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. 
Well, this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. For the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what... He's got a man complete! And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 36 yards on the play. Partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 16 more on that one and another first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Off the play fake, Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. 11 more on that one, and another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Cousins. That is caught at the seven yard line. Down to the six yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a second and four coming up. Up the middle, it's Cook. He gets him a little bit closer and takes it from the six inside the five to the four. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Cousins on third and two. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Four yards on the touchdown grab, and the Vikings have taken the lead. Well, that's just how they do it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to seven. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fields it right around the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. 
And yeah, now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Gino. Short throw to Disley. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To the right side, this is Walker. And some room to work. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 66 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily, break a few tackles, gain some additional yardage. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, right at the 40. Here's Smith. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball, and that is incomplete. Absolutely no disguise on that one. They just went for it. Put him out there and said, go deep. Let's try and hit him, unfortunately, to no avail. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. They'll drop the throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 27-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Gino on first down. Dancing to his left. Going right back to Fant. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this. Back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Only needing two yards on second down. To the air again, Smith. And he fires one that's intercepted. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously hindsight he did, but. Yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight, when you get six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points.
Joseph on for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. now to return it from his end zone and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense and I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit he's he's been great but they haven't scored a lot of points I think they still have to show him as a threat make sure he touches it a few times but as you pointed out Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points on And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You put a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Sticking with Walker on second down. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Smith being shaped and he can't get rid of it he's taken down multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game and when you're down a couple of scores like this CD you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one yeah when you take a good look at it broadly sacks are better than giving up an interception but where they are on the scoreboard They've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. As long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run. All right? It was kind of stacked up. 
found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second down, it's Cook again. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup. another first and ten one back in the backfield he'll get the carry tackled by Darrell Taylor if you're a coach you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second the first down run got five here's second and five Working out of the gun, Cousins. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Brent, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pick up because... They handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. From the red zone now, Cousins. And that's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. On second down, Cook. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. Throwing his Cousins. And that is incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to 7. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. Joseph now to kick this one away. Taken in at the three. 
And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. Now the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. On first and 10, Smith. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Geno now to throw. Man open, it's Goodwin. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Smith on third down. Complete. Oh, some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return, and it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. We'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. Cousins now to throw on first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Now Cousins. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Cousins to throw it. Throw there, going to be incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with a three-score deficit staring them in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. First down, Smith. Looking sideline, incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Oh, 
Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. They'll look to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. This time they stay on the ground, and they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change. So I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. Nineteen seconds showing to play in the half as they come up here first and ten. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll work this back to right around the line of scrimmage and surrender there. Cody Barton there to bring him down. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Seahawks in that first half. And they didn't get a whole lot accomplished through the air in those first two quarters of play. They'll need to up their game if they want to rally all the way back. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they too did throw the ball as well as they would have liked. And I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. trailing but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter Dallas now to return it from his end zone and they'll get him down right around the 25 actually the 26 officially so a net gain of one there the Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter and you have to think Charles down three scores already they need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance and that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Now a first down throw. It's Smith finding Rocket for the catch here on the out route. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. So from the 36 now, first and 10.
From the gun, here's Smith. Deep ball for Goodwin. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Smith throwing the out route, and he connects with Fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. This is Dallas, an inside handoff. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's gonna be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Back to throw, Smith. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So it looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Out of the gun, Smith. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And he's got this down the yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a full two. It's no good, and the deficit will stay at three scores. And this is a commentary on today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on them, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it, and now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. First down, here's Cousins. Throw left side complete. That's Osborne. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll try the middle with Cook. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 52 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt.
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Again, it's Cook to the 36-yard line. Stop there. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. From the 36, Cousins. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Third and short yardage, Cousins toward the sideline. He will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet in bounds. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. to the ground, Cook, and he'll get it down this time to the 17. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. They're bringing us about right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Cook up the gut. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They'll run with Cook. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Delvin Cook, his second touchdown of the afternoon. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Joseph now to have the PAT. And the lead is now 24. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, 
It has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Smith on first down. They'll find Goodwin here on the right side. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. On first down, it's Smith. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. To throw again on second down. Smith, left side complete to lock it. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 38-yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 38. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll go down at the 28. 85 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Again, it's Walker. Down at the 25. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 25 on second down, Smith. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Smith. Out to the right, he gets it to Lockett. Touchdown! Tyler Lockett, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. Gino's going to throw. And he's got it for the two point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. But well, still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure. But that makes it a two score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two point conversion, why you have more than one play ready. Because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there.
And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Nwongu now from his end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. the play fake Cousins and he wisely will throw that one away glad to have you with us from Minneapolis third quarter here second and ten to throw is Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. The offense on third down, they've hit four of seven. This is third and 11. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. Throwing now is Geno. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashing plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino setting up the screen here. This is Walker. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass down the field. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. Not sure what happened there. They just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be. And that will send them back to the drawing board. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. Good one. Able to haul it in. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they manage to convert. And that will keep the drive alive. The time to pull out the stops is now. And they convert there on fourth down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need. And that's exactly what they got done. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. 
Smith throwing again. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Looking to throw again on second down. Smith, and this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Geno now to throw. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now Smith. Escaping the pressure right. He'll get five out of the scramble and hit second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. Here's Smith. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Marquise Goodwin from six yards away. And the Seahawks are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. So this back now to a 10-point spread, and you have to imagine they'll line up and go for two. Oh, no question about it. If they can get this to an eight-point game, they can make things awfully interesting here in these last few minutes. The Seahawks will light up for a two-point conversion. They'll try and run it up the middle. And they will get back to within one score as he is into the end zone and the lead's cut to eight here in the fourth. the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And out now come the Vikings. This game is really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now you know, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Cousins on first down. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. 
trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. Now Cousins here on the bootleg, sliding out of the pocket. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. They got 29 yards that time. These guys are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Seahawk territory now. It's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's caught. That's some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. 90 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. They run again on first down. Cook. Oh, good move. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They run it again with Cook. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get it behind the line. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Draw play. Cousins to Cook. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Personal foul. Face back. Defense. Well, when you get an elite running back like he is, sometimes you've got to employ the by any means necessary method to get him down. Yeah, sometimes you're relieved even if a flag comes out. But if you just get the hand up and you get it on the mask, you can kind of get away with that. But as soon as you curl it around a finger or the hand, that's pretty easy for everyone to see. And they'll call that one every time. Now he's flat. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football. And he's taken down. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings have opened up a two-touchdown lead here this fourth quarter. 
So that Charles, his second touchdown of the ball game. He had the more standard receiving touchdown earlier. This time he finds the end zone in the run game. Yeah, it's almost as if he said, well, that's how I normally do it. That's almost boring. Give me another opportunity. This time I'll use my legs only and get into the end zone. Joseph connects on the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. That time a six-play drive. And a nice play on the end of it. An 18-yard touchdown run. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. Now we will get another look at Seattle's offense. The offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll. Looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And some room to run now. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Muscle damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Throwing is Smith. That's complete to his running back, Dallas. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. You got the big lead defensively. I'm willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Well, we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got it for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. The Smith's throw into the hands of Fan. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You're going to have six, seven yards. Do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. Now it's Smith. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he'll be brought down at the 27. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. And Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten, just shy of the five at the six. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run right down. 
ends up incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Back to throw, Smith. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Third and goal, and keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. To throw is Smith. And this is caught down for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do, because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. So that drive goes eight plays. And it's DK Metcalf who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. So here we go. They'll need the recovery, obviously, then a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And this game not quite in hand yet. We'll likely see all three timeouts defensively and then reassess where we are. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Cousins gives way to Cook. Yeah, work his way up the middle for a gain of about four. Second down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's Cook again. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Here's Cousins. Open man as Thielen is complete. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here
Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. But there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them. This one is now planted.